Hey, this is Ron Jacobs, and welcome to another episode of 10.4. Today we're going to look at one of the cool new things in WCF4, and that is the routing service. And what I'm going to show you today is one of uh, a portion of the lab called What's New in WCF4 uh, from the Visual Studio 2010 training kit. Uh, and so we'll begin with exercise 8, which is all about protocol bridging. Now, protocol bridging is the idea that sometimes you have a service that wants to communicate over one kind of transport like TCP and you have a client that wants to communicate over something else like HTTP. With the routing service in the middle I can actually bridge these protocols and get the two services talking together. So let's take a look. Well what we've got here is a simple app that we've built as kind of the starting point. It's a calculator and the service is hosted in a console app. It uses localhost port 9090 and the calculator service. Okay. Now the client app is a WPF app. It's going to also use a client endpoint definition using TCP calculator service. So we're just going to get started here and just kind of directly call from the client to the service. Now we see the service has caused Windows Firewall to prompt because it wants to use TCP. And if we click on invoke service here, as you would expect, uh, hey, WCF works. It called the service. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool, but it doesn't have anything to do with the routing service so far. So what we want to do is to make this more interesting is make a change to our application. So uh, we're going to bring in the routing service. So we built a project out. It's just a web project that has the routing service in it. And if we look at the markup for this router.svc file, we see it's really easy. Just one line of markup uh, that declares we're going to host the routing service. And really the magic of the routing service is driven by configuration. So if we come in here to the config, the first thing we need to do is tell the routing service about our calculator because it's going to have to know where to route messages to. So we've declared TCP here with we turned off security to make it easy and we've declared our regular calculator endpoint. And we're going to need a behavior. A service behavior is how the router works and so we've got a routing behavior and we give it the name of a filter table. And the filter table is how it determines where it's going to route things. So we'll begin with a very simple filter table. We have one filter we're calling the match all filter. It matches everything. And any match for that will route to the regular calculator endpoint. Okay, and that is about as simple as it gets, right? Because uh, we're just doing kind of a protocol bridging here. So, cool. Let's uh, also add our service definition here. So you see we've defined our service. It's using basic HTTP binding. Uh, and it's uh, hosting the I request reply router contract. All right, so now we need to change our client app so that it calls our HTTP based service instead of TCP. So I've put in here the client, it's using basic HTTP binding, it's calling localhost port 8000, uh, router service, WAC general, that's good. Let's just fire this thing up and we'll see it in action. So there's our, our calculator. I'm going to select routed HTTP connection and our, our calculator host is listening on TCP so when we invoke the service magic will happen as the router bridges the protocol and you see that the operations were indeed called on our service and the WPF client has the answers. That's pretty cool. All right. So now let's do something even more interesting and let's use some content of the message to make a routing decision. So for example, if I maybe have two kind of calculators, I have a regular one and I have one that does rounding. And if you want to use the rounding calculator service, you add a special header to your message and we will route to the rounding calculator service. So let's see how that works. So here I've got a newer version of my WPF client app and it's got a toolbar button that says if you want rounding or not. And so what we've done here is added some code to say if that button is checked, then grab the context, create an outgoing message header, and we'll call that header rounding calculator in my custom namespace, and it has a value of 1. So now we need to tell our routing service about this new thing. So if we open our web.config, we need to add to the routing section a namespace table. 
because we have a namespace, my custom namespace, and we need a prefix for it. Uh, we need all that because we're going to use XPath to match these messages, okay? And so we need the namespace prefix for our XPath expression. So here's our XPath filter, uh, and it says simply look in the headers, look for a header named rounding calculator in the custom namespace with a value of one. Now if you find that, then we're going to have a match. Now we need to add uh, an endpoint so we know where to route this thing to. So we have our rounding calculator in endpoint. It's at localhost 8080. Uh, it's using net TCP also. It doesn't have to. It could have used any uh, transport. Now we need to modify our filter table. So we'll have two filters. Uh, so the first filter is going to be our new one, our XPath filter. And uh, it will route to the rounding calculator endpoint. You notice that the priority is one. And the way this works, the higher the priority, the more important the filter is. Okay, so two's better than one, one's better than zero, right? All right, so now we've selected routed HTTP connection. We say use rounding. We invoke our service. And when we do, we're going to see, bam, the rounding calculator was used, and that's great. And we can uncheck this box so we're not adding the header. When we don't, then it goes to the default, the match all filter, and uses the regular calculator. And let's go back and do rounding one more time just for fun. And you see, there it is, it's all working. Okay, so that is pretty cool. It shows us how we can use a header as a way to kind of route things. And there's another very interesting use case for this, and that is the idea of a backup list or, or failover. Like, what happens if a client tries to call a service that uh, either doesn't exist or isn't functioning right now. Can we use this to manage that? Well, in fact, we can because the routing service supports a backup list. So if we try to call a bad endpoint, the routing service can consult this backup list and say, well, is there another server I should call? And maybe there's more than one. There might be five in the backup list. And it will try calling them in order until it succeeds. So uh, to test this out, we're going to add an endpoint here to our client for the router service. And the router uh, says, okay, we've got bad endpoint here. It's on localhost 404, right? <laughs> so this endpoint does not exist. So we're going to change our XPath filter to try to route to the bad endpoint. And uh, uh, so we've replaced the regular or rounding calculator there. Let's just run it to see what happens when you try to route to something that doesn't exist. So I'm going to call the routed connection. We'll use rounding. So we'll add that header. So this will match in our XPath filter. And the routing service is trying to call bad endpoint. Obviously, it doesn't exist, so it throws a communication exception. And that's just what we wanted. But now, let's see how we can deal with that. So I've pasted in here a backup list. And I've added an endpoint definition to my backup list. And there could be more than one of these, but I'm just going to do one for now. And now we modify our filter table to have a backup list. So now when we get a match on that filter table, it will have a list of backup servers that it can call. So let's fire this up and we'll just test out the failover. We are again using rounding and we'll go to invoke the service. Now, uh, as I said before, the routing service is trying to call bad endpoint. So the user of the calculator is going to notice a delay here while it fails uh, to get that. But then soon enough, bam, it fails over. And look at that, it just worked. The client app didn't have to do anything special to retry at a different address. And this gives us a, a, a great new capability because uh, I don't want to make my client apps have kind of sophisticated retry logic. I want to build the logic about retries and what servers to retry and all that kind of stuff kind of on the server side. And the routing service gives me that capability. So I encourage you to check out the What's New in WCF4 Lab and you'll get a chance to see the routing service in action as well as some other things like the new simplified configuration of WCF4 as well as service discovery. For 10.4, I'm your host, Ron Jacobs, over and out.